show for fun fairs or circuses. They would pull the amusements to the site. They would help erect the big top or the tents if they needed them. They would use the generation during it for fairground rides or for scenic or for picture shows. It's really versatile bits of kit. They are, however, some of the more expensive tractor engines. And they're also some of the tractor engines which take the greatest work in keeping them complete. I know all that class takes an awful lot to get in that condition you see it in. Many an hour goes into it. And just then it was generating, it was being cleaned out as it was going. A beautiful engine, today sponsored by Atmac Rail Specialities Limited and owned by S. Bush. Rebuilt from a dismantled state in 2006. Purchased by C. Haylock in 2017. Exhibited today by P. Starling. And today is sponsored by MIGTEC Limited. Very different from the first engine you saw. This one, a general purpose traction engine, but there's a difference on the flywheel. The flywheel on the general purpose engines are spoked, but on the road locomotives, like you see on the showmans, they're not spoked. And it was done like that because it was felt the spokes could frighten the horses on the highway back in the day. Well, Nadal Taylor coming past the commentary box now on his beautiful Wallace and Stevens expansion engine called Faith. Built their Basingstoke Works in 1916. Faith was made and used for moving guns about during World War I. Lots of the tractor engines at the time were taken over to France, used for that purpose. It's a miracle they were repatriated, but nonetheless, many were. Now, Faith is one of the early traction engines to move into cultivation, being found derelict beside the road in Lavenham by Nadal Taylor, its current owner, in 1965. Had a new firebox fitted in 1990, and sponsored by SR Halon Agricultural Machinery. Well, we're moving on to one of the oldest Barrels. In existence, not quite the oldest, the oldest is uh, entering the century of the Tower of Spencegate Farm near Brandon. But the old chap has been reached many times. And it was built in 1890. Originally new to Old Dugan in January 1891, but used on the Colton Hall estate. It was sold around the 1930s and used to drive a saw bench on electrical heat for about 20 years. If you notice on the early barrels, they've got the larger boiler barrels on them. Very noticeable on Century and the old chap. Well, number 10, past the common feet point. We're sticking with barrel this time, but we're moving on to a road locomotive. As I said before, notice the closed flywheel on that one. These were really colossuses of the movement of steam. They would be used for haulage and heavy haulage. They were used to a lot of photographs carrying big boilers and tubes and pipes. And these would have been your, your, your lorries of the day, putting out heavy haulage all the way across the UK. Or we used a lot around ports as well. This particular one is owned by T Maynard quarries in Somerset for haulage of uh, Quarried material, sand, gravel, they were used a lot more. Saved for preservation by Len Run of Kings Lynn and rebuilt by the present owners between 2013 and 2015. Well, a different manufacturer of engines now. It's a foul engine, the foul of Sir Dives in Huntingdonshire. This one built in 1922. Owned by Stuart Hines of Great Barton. Today sponsored by Whitton and Frost and Sun. It was new to the Royal Show in Cambridge in 1922 and sold to Edwards Brothers of Great Ravely for preservation in 1958 and acquired by the owner in 2017. Well, a bit of a special tractor called Race With Me Now. It's a Wallace and Stevens oil bar tractor rated at four nominal horsepower. Traction engines are rated in nominal horsepower. So what they did when they first rated them was they needed some way of rating the power. In reality, it's far more than four horses, but they need this nominal rating for it. This particular one 
is making somewhat of a centenary return to the area. It was supplied to you in 1923 to Fed Rural District Council, which is here in Elmswell. Sold to Dolan Brothers of Bedford, who were contractors for the roads mainly, and they were going to convert it into a roller, but it never took place, thank goodness. It was acquired by Market Chain Loader in 1994 and first themed in 2015. And it's very fitting it's come back to Warpit Steam for its 100th anniversary, back to the place where it was first deployed. So what would these little tractors be used for? Lighter haulage. Um, we have one at some of the rallies which is in the Pickford delivery that was used for removals, for instance. These would have been used for your lighter haulage around town where you didn't need the big power of a big road locomotive for it. Also, it's slightly easier because it conformed with legislation that was around at the time as well, where you could only have engines of a certain weight on the highway. And these little tractors became very popular. But not too many survived, particularly in this pilot condition. Well, we're moving on to. Leave the arena. It's worth taking a having a thought about the tractors because the tractors are very much the descendants of the traction engine. They were the next generation. They took over. I did wonder if it was George up there, but 
I do remember George went A when he was four and B looking about that height and it makes you and me feel old now, Jeremy. So the next generation, George is Jeremy's son, Barry's grandson. I think it's fair to say George has uh, grown into a steam family somewhat over the years, just as well he's got steam in his veins. I remember him coming to the, to the rallies as a little baby quite a few years ago. Um, not the strapping lad he is today. So Steve very much being kept alive in our families, which is great news.